So let's take a second to just talk about what makes Live different from other digital audio workstations. Ableton has a nonlinear functionality, and this is really one of the largest key functions which separates it from something like Pro Tools or Logic or Studio One or any other DAW that may, you may have accessed before. So a linear DAW or a linear function means that it's happening inside of a timeline. So when you're in a linear DAW, you're looking at a timeline. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. You're in measure three, you're at 30 seconds. You're, you're in a fixed time and you're either working in the beginning, middle, or end, or wherever your cursor is currently selected at any given time. Live has a nonlinear function inside of its software which allows you to work outside of a timeline. So before we kind of jump into how this works specifically in Live, let's just talk conceptually how this works with music. Right? We don't always interact with music in a linear sense. When we're composing, it's very nonlinear. Right? You don't write the first note and then the second note and then the third note and then conclude with the final note of your, your composition or piece. It comes in fragments and ideas. Perhaps there's a rhythmic figure and then there's a chord progression or any idea could come to you at any time and then eventually you take all of those ideas and then put them in a linear format to share with everybody. Ableton allows us to work in that same way that we interact intellectually with music, right? So let's take a look at how this works inside of Live. You can see I have several tracks here. I've got two audio tracks which have clips inside of them. These are audio loops. I've got loop one, loop two, and loop three. Uh, loop two is two bars, loop one is four bars, and loop three is another four bars. So in this one single track, I have two different audio clips. On the left-hand side, I have a MIDI track, which has two clips inside of it. So if I click on the track itself, I'm looking at the virtual instrument. And then if I click on the clip, I'm seeing the MIDI sequence inside of it. So this is a one-bar pattern, and then I've got a separate one-bar sequence as well. So two MIDI sequences in this first track, two audio clips in the second track, and one audio loop in the third track. Additionally, you can see I have a lot of empty slots here, and there's different icons on the left-hand side of these clips or these empty clip slots, depending on what's going on. So if there's something currently in the clip slot, you can see that there's a play icon on the side. If there's nothing, I've got a stop icon. This MIDI track happens to be armed right here, and so you can see that these have record icons, and it's saying, do you want to record into this clip? Do you want to play what's currently in this clip slot? Do you want to press stop? So as I launch these different clips, they're all going to happen on the next downbeat, or any of these actions, whether I press stop, whether I press play, whether I press record, the action is going to happen on the next downbeat. And that's what's referred to as a global quantization, right? So the action is happening on whatever the global quantization is, and I set that up here. So by default, it's set to one bar, and this is going to keep everything lined up in a really nice structure and format to everything so that when I launch loop three and then I launch loop one, they're all going to be lined up. So let's take a look at this happening. I'll start with loop three. So anytime I pressed play or stop on any of these clips, it was always happening on the next downbeat. And that's what's going to keep everything all lined up and easy to maneuver and experiment with as I'm in this sort of compositional phase. So you probably noticed that as I launched a clip that was in a track, it would turn off any other clips that were in that track as well. So the rule here really is that you can only play one clip in any single track. And so if I launch this first loop and then I launch the second one, it's going to stop this first loop. 
If I press stop on any of these, it's going to stop any of the clips playing. And each of these tracks has a master stop button at the bottom of the track if I want to just stop whatever's happening here as well. So that's a very brief look at how nonlinear function works inside of live. I never entered a timeline. There was no beginning, middle, or end of my song at this point, and I'm just being playful, I'm experimenting, and I'm putting my ideas together. So that's an important kind of mental place to get to with the DAW. This side of the software is where I'm going to compose, where I'm going to experiment, where I'm going to find my ideas and sketch them out. And then on this other side, this is the linear timeline where I put them in a specific order. And that's really what separates live from most other DAWs. Thank you.